You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. And I'm Joni Harwell. And that means that we are continuing our KFUO history series. Always fun to have Joni along to share these stories. I missed a few, but glad to be back in studio because we get to visit with a friend who you hear from time to time still on KFUO today. And so we're going to chat with Pastor Nicely in just a moment. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin for supporting the Coffee Hour. Find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live Uncommon. Joining us today, the Reverend Doug Nicely, former KFUO on-air host and guest here on KFUO from time to time. He was host of In His Steps and Do You Have a Minute? Pastor Nicely, welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. It's such a great honor to be back here with you all and in the studio and the whole thing, which is really nice. When did your time at KFUO begin? It started in the summer of 1973, which is now 51 years ago, (laughs) (laughs) which is absolutely amazing. And I'm so happy that you invited me to come back and talk to you about the 100th anniversary of the station, because I was the guy who produced the special program to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the station. (laughs) And who would have known 50 years ago that I'd still be around now? So what were you doing in 1973 that brought you to KFUO? Well, I, I went to the seminary in St. Louis, started there in, in the summer of 1973. And so I tried my hardest to be able to do what I could about getting things all worked together. My degree in college was in the area of speech, radio, and television. <laughs> and so I applied for a job at the radio station because I always wanted to be a radio announcer. And Pastor Paul Deventier hired me. Oh, for an interesting title, I'm sure you've never run into anybody else who have had this title at the radio station. I was the religious news reporter. <laughs> and, and you reported the religious news. I did. Well, remember back in 1973, we had a little bit of controversy going on at Concordia Seminary. Mm-hmm. That was when we were having the disagreement between the faculty majority and minority and all the rest of that stuff was happening. Interestingly, I had graduated from college two years before and I started out trying to go to the seminary in Springfield, now Fort Wayne, Indiana. And I basically uh, went there to study Greek and didn't do well. Well, and it really was important during Mm -hmm. that time for people to be aware of what was going on. And so that was an important job for you to be doing. Yes, and I was so happy. And I was so happy to be able to be given that job. Mm -hmm. And, And as a religion news reporter, I had all kinds of things to report during the next few years. The, the reason why it was good to be able to have me do the production for the 50th anniversary was that I had interviewed a whole bunch of people because of my job, and I was able to put all of that stuff together. Now, how do you put stuff together 50 years ago? You had to use reel-to-reel tapes. <laughs> do Sarah, do you have any idea what I mean by a reel-to-reel tape? I've seen them in pictures. That's about it. <laughs> we have some around here now. I have, yeah, that's true. I guess I've seen them. Have I seen them in real person? I guess so. There are some in Gary's office. Okay, then, then yeah. I've seen them. Okay. I don't know that I've laid my hands on one yet, though. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I worked in what we called there at the building on the, on the campus, Studio E. Hmm. Only Studio E in that building was in the basement instead of on the fourth floor. Mm-hmm. And there was no microphone in Studio E. Basically, all you did was you had this reel-to-reel tape recorder and you had this little bracket on the top of it where you would have to clip little bits and pieces of tapes that you had pre-recorded and then, pay, and, then, and then tape them together so that you would have a program. So I could do interviews, but I had to make sure that that was included in my narration and everything. So I had to, I had to do it that very complicated way in order to make sure that it came out sounding all right. And that's how you did, that's how you did interviews, and that's how you did news in those days. It's like Adobe Audition, but not <laughs> with tape, <laughs> with literal tape with, and tape. blades <laughs> and blades. Yes, that'd and be fun to try one day for little art projects. I would need band aids. <laughs> yes, because those those blades were awfully <laughs> were awfully sharp. <laughs> what did you move on to then with your programming? I know when I came to KFUO, you were already busy doing all kinds of programs. Yeah, I. 
basically there were several programs that that I was I was given the opportunity to do while I was working there. One was a weekly call-in program. We we had that once a week and basically that meant that you know you you got a chance to have people call you up and tell you whatever was on their, what was on their mind and sometimes it was rather interesting all the things that they had and their opinion and all. But that was for that was for a half an hour, and we did that on Thurs on Thursdays. Somehow or another, later on, we developed another way of doing it. And the other program I did was called In His Steps. You remember that, Joni? I do remember it. Yes. Okay. Remember what In His Steps was? It was a devotional. Was it right. what was going to be the weekend? What Saturday at noon? Right. From noon to twelve thirty. And it was me and another announcer from the radio station that basically talked about the Sunday scripture readings right. for the for the next day. And we commented back and forth on them. Two of my co-hosts when I was doing that, because we had several over a period of years, was, let's see, I'm trying to remember. One was Diane Summers. Wasn't Diane it? Summers, yeah, who actually does have does have another real name. <laughs> that was one of those people who actually had a radio name. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So I won't give her other name out. <laughs> and the other the other was Chuck Rather, who at the time was the general manager of the radio station. Yeah. And we did that for quite a few years. Yeah. And then I developed another program called Do You Have a Minute, which became kind of a legendary program for me. It was a little daily devotion that actually lasted a minute and a half. <laughs> but I figured, well, Lutherans are the way they are. You know, you just, it's a radio mass. Say, I mean, the coffee that. hour is only half an hour. So. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, you, We're not you the, the Lutheran hour only lasts 30 minutes. So I figured right. if I had a, you know, do you it's have fine. a minute that lasts a minute and a half, that works okay. What is basically a one-page devotion. And when I got to the end of the page, I had to be saying amen at the end of, at the, end of the prayer. And I put together all of these things in written scripts. I, I don't know exactly when I started it, but right now I have on floppy disks. Do you know what that is? I have used those, yes. Okay. I have on <laughs> floppy disks some that I recorded in 1999. And then on my computer, it picks up in the early 2000s and goes all the way to 2013. Uh, these were five-day-a-week devotions, so I'd have to, you know, write them all up. And a lot of times it was just kind of running commentary on the scriptures and that sort of thing. And But I, but I ran it for, for all of those years. It's interesting that those radio scripts for Do You Have a Minute turned out to be something that I used later on when the pandemic showed up. Mm-hmm. Uh-oh, okay. And I started sending out daily emails to people that had the Do You Have You Minute scripts attached on the top. And I have a prayer list um, that, that goes out for the people. I'm still doing that today. So that was that was helpful all by itself to be able to do those things. And, and I'm still using stuff from 2008 for my Monday through Friday devotions or 2010 or whatever it is. And then then after the pandemic showed up, there was one more program that developed, and that was thanks to our friend Gary Duncan. Gary started recording programs with several of us weekly, and my weekly program was called Moment of Faith. Mm-hmm. And basically, my Moment of Faith program does a little devotion and then kind of explains the story behind hymns and songs. Mm-hmm. And and it's just become a fun thing, and I'm still writing them every week and sending them out on email to people. And that little devotion, Moment of Faith, now is a part of our church's Facebook page. Hmm. I think as you share your history at KFO, it just shows the dedication, the love for our listeners that you have, the care that you have for those people, and it takes a lot of time. It's not just something I think sometimes people think you get behind the microphone and all of a sudden you start talking and there mm-hmm. it is. But that's not true, is it? You spend a lot of time working all of this. The only one I did like that was the call-in program and then the In His Steps program that I did in dialogue. Otherwise, everything was thoroughly scripted, mm-hmm. word for word. <laughs> and I had to do it exactly the way it was scripted. And every once in a while, for the Do You Have a Minute devotions, I wasn't able to get to the station. 
So then I found out that Gary Duncan, who lives about a mile and a half away from our church, <laughs> had a studio in his house. So I'd go there and record a whole week's worth of those things at, at Gary's house. <laughs> How have you been able to connect with listeners over the years? I mean, you've been associated with KFUO for a long time. Yeah. What are some of those highlights of being able to connect with everybody that's that's listened over the years and listened to your programs over the years? Well, there there have been various different connections. The, the ones that I can think of right off the top of my head are the people who found out that I was sending out these uh, uh, early devotions, and they asked me to put them to put them on my mailing list. So I'm sending out these daily devotions to, and I counted it up yesterday, 125 people a day. Hmm. Now, is this via the internet? Is this? Yeah, it's on okay. the internet. Okay, right. great. It's just great. an email mm-hmm. that, I, that mm-hmm. I send out. In fact, there are so many, with 125, that I have to send it out in three different chunks of mailings wow. every day <laughs> because email won't send out mm-hmm. 125 emails to anybody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I've learned how to do it all in about a half an hour. That's wonderful. Yeah. Pastor, you are still serving the church today, correct? Yes. I have a congregation in Collinsville, Illinois, called Jerusalem Lutheran Church. And I am, let's see, what would I call it? Kind of retired. <laughs> 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 which means which means that, you know, we don't have office hours or anything like that, but somehow or another we continue on. And I inherited this congregation from Dr. Alvin Coleman, who was the Southern Illinois District President. But he was the interim pastor at Jerusalem Lutheran Church for 55 years. <laughs> it's very interim. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, for all those years that we were in what they were calling survival mode. And we still don't have a whole lot of people on Sunday morning. But as I keep explaining to people, we have survived right. for, for the last 60 years. God's word is still there. The gifts are still given, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Amen. And, and we have an opportunity to do big and little things with people in the church. I, I really appreciate the opportunity. Going back to the old days when I was serving my church full-time, another church full-time, that I have a chance to do a children's sermon every Sunday now because we have one kid in the church. <laughs> and so I have him come up and we do a little message with him every, every Sunday, <laughs> which is kind of fun. What's one thing that stood out from the 50th anniversary at KFUO as we wrap up our time together today, looking forward to the 100th anniversary? One thing that stood out for you during the 50th anniversary? You know, I was really happy to be able to go out and get these uh, little records and tapes of the original things. And in fact, I included in that broadcast an interview, or no, it was a sermon, of uh, Walter A. Meyer. Mm. Wow. You know, which, you know, the original founder. And I had an opportunity when I did the 50th broadcast to talk to his son, Paul Meyer. And what was interesting was that a couple of years later, when I was on Vicarage, it ended up in Western Michigan, (laughs) and I got a chance to meet Paul Meyer in person when I was there, which was really kind of fun. Fantastic. Well, we are gathering lots of sound artifacts and sound bites as well from historical pieces from KFUO to share during our 100th anniversary coming up in October. We begin that 100th anniversary celebration and we have an invitation. Is that right, Joni? That is correct. We do have an invitation to the join us as we celebrate a century of Christ for you. The KFUO 100th anniversary is going to be on Saturday, October 12th here at the International Center. 10 a.m. service of Thanksgiving. Dr. Harrison will be preaching and the doors open at nine o'clock and we would like you to join us. If you can, please respond at kfuo.org slash RSVP and you must respond by September 20th. We need to have a count of how many people are coming, but we would certainly love to have you here. And of course, some of the people who we've interviewed who are not out of town, we they will be here with us also, so you'll have a chance to visit with them. Join us Saturday, October 12th for the 100th anniversary beginning celebration, a special service that day. And please RSVP by September 20th. You can do that at kfuo.org slash 
RSVP. Pastor Nicely, thanks so much for being our guest on the Coffee Hour. You're welcome, Andy. Sarah, Joni, thank you so much for spending time, letting me spend time with you. Put it oh, that way. you had to be here. Yes. <laughs> we'll share more KFUO history stories in just a moment. You're listening to the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. And I'm Joni Harwell. At Concordia University, Wisconsin, we believe you were created for a reason, to use your God-given gifts to help others, to live a life of self-sacrifice in a me-first world, to live a life that's uncommon. Whether you're taking one of 50-plus online programs or learning with us in person on the shores of Lake Michigan, you'll be equipped to make an uncommon impact. Learn more at cuw.edu. Concordia University, Wisconsin. Live uncommon.